here's another nest. If you take a look at the same nest with a person standing next to it, it's not very high off the ground, but look how big that baby is. Again, with those false stories, how would that baby climb on its mother's back? These babies grow very quickly. This is the same, this is the, the nest you just saw. This nest belongs to the same pair, but was used on a different year. And if you look in the center of the screen, you can see uh, this is at the edge of a canyon, but it's at the very top. So you can literally walk right up to this nest and look at it. But from below, it's uh, quite an advantageous spot. So on rare occasions in some countries, golden eagles will nest in a tree if they have to, but they definitely prefer a cliff nest. Now remember, a nest is a crib, not a home. You know, you ask what, you, know, you see these little kids' books, where does the bird live in a nest? No, it doesn't. A nest is a crib. Now, eagles cannot smell, but mammals can. Every day that those babies are in that nest, they are making a stronger and stronger scent build up in the nest that a predator like a, like a bobcat could find, get into the nest and kill the babies. So they want to get out as soon as possible. And remember, uh, I said mom and dad don't teach the babies how to fly. The babies, when they are able to hop around, they'll start hopping around the cliff face and on the rock face that they live on, glide, soar, teach themselves how to fly, and then sleep at night in the nest as they're learning that skill. So an eagle egg is a little bigger than a chicken egg, maybe closer to a goose egg. And the baby hatches, of course, it's the size of the egg. They're just cute little fluff balls, and they really quickly start to get big. Now, at first, you get their brain and their spine growing, and then the rest of their body, the skeleton. Now, you look at this baby eagle, you look at those legs, and you look at the talons. We'll take a closer look in just a second. The feathers that are growing the fastest right now are the tail feathers and the primary and secondary flight feathers on the wings. The reason for that is that if this eagle is not quite ready to leave the nest yet and a bobcat comes in and attacks the nest he can jump out and attempt to just glide down to the ground whereas parents will keep feeding him uh, even though he's on the ground or he could climb up the cliff and, and get up so this is uh, for birds of prey an escape mechanism first grow the spine and the brain then spend more effort growing the skeleton and the primary and secondary feathers Here's the same bird a little bit later. You can take a look how, again, there's a lot of patches, but those secondary and primary wing feathers are big enough that he could t jump out and still be okay. Now, I want you to take a look at this skeleton. This is a golden eagle skeleton. It's amazing when you see underneath the feathers how long and skinny the neck actually is. <clears throat> and if you see how long the legs are, this is, this is pretty important to understand as well. Uh, the legs and the feet are what they kill with, not the beak. The beak is an eating utensil. The feet are, are, are the business end of the eagle. And that's true on a baby. This is a baby eagle in the nest, and you look at these feet, these could do some real damage, and this is a bird that has never even flown yet. So parents can be aggressive in the nest, but usually they're not. Usually near the nest, they figure their babies are big enough and have strong enough feet that they can fend for themselves. And we see this to be fairly true, most eagles around, around the world, most golden eagles. Again, gigantic feet on a baby. This is a golden eagle that was banded. You can see on its right leg, it's got a, a, a aluminum band to track where it goes, but these talons are huge and very powerful. Now, sibling rivalry. You may have heard that one eagle will kill the other, that the two chicks, there'll be two chicks in a nest, and the bigger, more powerful chick will kill the younger one. Uh, there's truth to it, but it most certainly is not a rule. So, first of all, there might only be one baby, or there could be three. Uh, on a good year, you could have three fertile eggs hatch. And here's the rule of sibling rivalry. More food equals less sibling rivalry. If mom and dad can provide enough food that all of the babies can survive just fine, they will. Sibling rivalry creeps up when there's a limit of food. And when you're feeding a bird as big as a golden eagle, that, that can happen quite frequently. One of the problems in Utah is the hunting of jackrabbits. Now, 
Jackrabbits in early pioneer and early settler frontiers days were a huge problem to crops, and in farming communities they still can be. Uh, wildlife conservation and hunting laws have been based off of that situation. So in Utah and almost every western state that I'm aware of, anybody can hunt a jackrabbit anywhere with any weapon and they can just kill them and leave them out. So people use them as basically target practice. The problem with that is people shoot them with shotguns with lead shot and they just leave them there. And two problems. Number one, golden eagles will come after and eat the freshly killed jackrabbit and get lead poisoning and die. The other problem is even if you shoot with steel shot, just decimating a rabbit population in an area decimates the golden eagle's food source. So in an attempt to uh, keep a situation alive that made a lot of sense maybe in pioneer times, people are actually hurting uh, golden eagles now. This is the end of part three of this PowerPoint. Uh, go ahead and check out part four to see the rest of the presentation.